Well, thank you, folks. Uh, good to see you all here this evening. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we have a quorum. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I um, second. Other, are you? Other than uh, our roll call, which I think Erica basically went through here, uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda of what we currently have? I move to approve. Second. Second. Very good. We have uh, approval of the previous month's minutes. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the previous month's minutes. I'll second. Marshall. Thank you, Marshall. Very good. On to our fourth agenda item. Um, update from our golf professionals. Uh, who wants to be the lucky person to go first this week? I guess I can start. All right, Sam. All right. Thank you for speaking up. Go Howdy, folks. Hello. Oh, Sam. Hey there. Okay, so um, looking at your board packets, you will see that in the month of January, we got an open 11 days, um, 919 rounds. Prior year, we're open 19 days, 1,688. So we're about 45% behind in rounds. And as that relates into revenues, you'll see that um, $42,040 in revenue compared to the prior year, 74882 Again, about 44% 40, down in revenues, which really is insignificant this time of year. It's just kind of a typical winter, uh, January month. Um, but I got to tell you, when we're open, we're busy. Um, today, I'm just closing up now. We, uh, we had about 85 players today. Tomorrow, we're booked until 2.30. Every tee time is filled. So I'm very encouraged getting into next season. It seems like when the weather's good, we're filling up. So mm -hmm. looking very much forward to this year. I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Any questions for you, Creek? So I have a question for, the, for all three pros in general, is there a way to get maybe better notification of, of when you're open and when you're closed? I mean, like, for example, today I looked and I saw that you Creek was booking tea times with Twin Peaks wasn't. I mean, how, how did you get a, Did you get an email from you, Creek? Yeah, I did, Marshall. I, did. I mean, confirming my tea time for tomorrow, but today. So today yeah. I looked and I saw that you was taking tea times, but Twin Peaks didn't have any. And usually, when one's open, they're both open. So just we curious. sent out an email yesterday um, notifying that we're going to be open. I, you need to get on our email list. That would be the best way. Right. Um, I'm not sure how you go about doing so you book online through golf now or through our website well i look there to see if there's tea times and then i call because i've seen you have booked through them as well haven't you i have sometimes yes because i i think that automatically puts you on the email list but i can look into that for you um i mean it was more that generally is how, that is how we notify folks and i gotta tell you when we send those emails out we fill up fast yeah i, mean, I, I think i belong to like all three and all three have my email. And I'm not just speaking for me in general, just it would be nice to know, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be open tomorrow. Cause this week was odd, right? It was cold and snowy and but then it warmed up. We weren't sure, you know, for myself, I wasn't sure if it'd be open today. I mean, I knew tomorrow I have a time for tomorrow and others do. So I was just wondering about the maybe it's a website thing, right? The websites could say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're open or closed. Well. I can speak to a little bit of that. Uh, at Twin Peaks, we, we the snow didn't melt off, so we needed today to melt us off. So we didn't send out an email saying that we were going to be open because I knew we wouldn't be open today. All of our greens were covered going into today. And um, another way of finding out would be to call the golf course. And if we don't answer, our answering service answers, and they know the status of the course when they call, when you call. Okay, thank you. So that's, and I had, I had let them know that today that we would be closed today, open tomorrow. Yeah. Very good. Is, uh, is Ryan on? Thank you. I, yep. Yeah, I see Ryan on. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah, Mon, can you hear me? Sure can. Yes, sir. Cool. I guess I'll go since uh, I'll go next. Um, for Thank sunset. you, Sam. All right, Ryan, go for it. So looking at uh, looking at the packet there for sunset, um, kind of trailing what uh, Sam mentioned. It's typical uh, uh, winter in a. Um, but uh, we were projected for 375 rounds. We actually did uh, 584 rounds, oh. although the revenue side of it doesn't uh, show the increase there. It was uh, projected for $9,000 in revenue. Um, we actually came in at 8000 in revenue. Now, the, the skew you see there with the round side of it, a lot of it's for membership. A lot of membership holder players that have their annual member memberships they pay, they come out no matter the weather. So the of the 10 days that we were open majority of them um tend to be a lot of the the guys that have 660 dollars memberships or the 990 dollars elite memberships um but uh again like again like sam said when we're open it is fairly busy tomorrow i'm i'm gonna be booked uh, about 85 percent right now weren't you doing a lot of um tree trimming too in january yeah, we did do a lot of tree trimming. Um, that really didn't hinder the play in a sense. They they stayed away from everybody um, off the edge of the fairway, like borderline on the uh, property line of the golf course, I should say. Right. Um, didn't cause any issues and in, in, in anything there. Um, and all the customers, when they were playing, they were notified that, hey, just so you're aware, be aware. If you hit a ball that way, don't chase it. Right. Those guys pick it out too. All right, for Twin Peaks, we were open that lucky number 11 days as well as, as Duke Creek uh, played 1,047 rounds. And kind of like what Ryan said, we uh, had a lot of annual pass play. You know, that when you, when you buy that pass, you will play on every opportunity you get and uh, membership play. And that, that obviously drives down the price of the pass or the price of the round as you go throughout the year. So we had a lot of that play and, and we were, you know, again, very busy. I would agree with Sam on that. We were very busy uh, on the days that we were open 11 days, 42,000. That's, you know, close to a $4,000 a day in January. Uh, it was also really good because as we talked about at our last meeting, we extended everyone's expiration dates. The expiration dates for the annual passes used to be December 31st and people would all come in in January and buy a new one. So if everybody had come in and bought a new one in January, we would have had a much huger, uh, obviously, revenue number. But because all those memberships were extended into February, all the folks are coming in and buying them in February. So hopefully, of course, we've missed most of the month of February for weather, too. So anyway, ended up with $42,000 in revenue. And like I said, once all that annual, all that annual pass uh, purchase price <clears throat> backfills in, that's going to help us out a lot. And I would agree with Sam. When we're open, we are busy, and that definitely hasn't changed. And uh, apologies uh, to Al for not letting everyone know that we were going to be closed today, but uh, we, we did get it open. I heard from my maintenance crew late in the afternoon. They had to go out and move snow just to get us open for tomorrow, but I knew it would be a good day for us to be open. So we're going to be open tomorrow. And, uh, Al, we appreciate your thoughts on that. We'll try to do a better job of getting the word out to everybody as, uh, as we get closer. It's just kind of hard to tell from one day to the next. Uh, this time of year. So any questions for Twin Peaks? I have a question. Um, maybe this is probably for, directed to Jeff. I noticed that the 2021 projected revenue stayed the same year over year. Is yeah. That and, and, and that was because we really don't know what to expect this year. If, if things are going to go crazy or if they'll be back to normal. So we just kept them uh, the same way, like the pros have said, the way things have started out and with the look <clears throat> of uh, where we are with uh, vaccinations, it looks like things should be pretty busy at least through midsummer. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, the projections will be all right. And as we get a little further into the year, I can adjust those based on what we're experiencing. Okay, interesting. All right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. If there's nothing else, we'll move on to the next item.
uh, public to be heard. Understand that there's no public today. Old business. Item six. Doesn't seem as though that there's any old business there, unless I'm missing something, Jeff. Nope, no old business. New business. Yep. Um, electronic participation policy for boards and commissions designation. Yes, the clerk's office has uh, worked with the city legal team to define policies during emergencies like <clears throat> we're in right now with the pandemic. And uh, what they've asked us to do is uh, have everybody um, review these policies. And again, it kind of talks about how we'll, we'll hold meetings uh, through Zoom. It talks about uh, making sure that uh, if board members don't have uh, access that we can help with that and that we always make sure that uh, we have access uh, for the public to be a part of our meeting if they so choose. Um, one of the things that I did verify based on questions I had at the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board is that once the emergency designation goes away, we will start having meetings in person. At that time, all the board members that can participate will have to come to the meeting. We can't do some in person and some in Zoom. It's, it's uh, really not uh, allowed to keep uh, joining virtually uh, that everybody would need to come to the meeting. Um, some, some of the board members felt like they could still join uh, the meeting if they were on vacation and that would not be allowed. So I can answer any questions you might have and if there are any questions, we'll need to pass a, pass a motion to accept uh, these policies. Open to the floor for questions. I move they be approved. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Next item of is uh, Structured Golf Services and Enterprise Fund. Yep, Erica, if you're there, if you could put that uh, PowerPoint up for us. All righty, give me just a sec. All right, can you all see all that? All right, thank you. So each, each year in January or February, I, I like to try to do a review of the structure of, of uh, golf and to cover a little bit with uh, budgets and how uh, the CIP project process works. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. So golf is, is uh, a part of an enterprise fund within the city structure, which means all of the revenues generated by the golf course stay within the golf fund. The only tax revenue that golf receives at this point in time is to pay the debt off on the bond projects that were passed in 2018. So these revenues help pay for the maintenance of the course, pays for the contracts with the golf pros, and it also pays for the ongoing uh, capital projects that we do to try to help improve the golf courses. Uh, next slide. In golf, we have what I will say is somewhat of a unique situation as compared to a lot of other uh, of the divisions and departments within the city. Um, golf does two different things. We have staff that are actually paid for by the city and we have uh, right around 11 employees that work for the city that maintain the golf courses. We also have contracts with the three golf pros and many of the people that you see that work in the clubhouses actually are employees of the pros, not of the city of Longmont. So those people maintaining the courses again are, are city employees. 
Um, we also have a, a unique situation going on at this time. Um, we have uh, two acting uh, supervisors and they will speak uh, here in, in just a few minutes. Brian Hennings and Dan Reese are both acting supervisors that took the place of Jeff Andreessen and Jeff Weed who retired uh, this last December. And then last week, we were also notified of another retirement that will take place in early April. Greg Mall, who has been at uh, Sunset Golf Course for many years as one of our senior grounds maintenance techs will be retiring. So we are in the process of reviewing how best to replace these positions and uh, as we start making determinations, we'll make those presentation, presentations to the board. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the newest things that occurred in golf is when we went to the uh, dynamic pricing uh, philosophy. That uh, philosophy is best explained uh, uh, like when you rent uh, or get a hotel room when you reserve it online. And as you're aware, hotel rooms based on time of year, time of day, um, events going on in those communities that uh, the prices of those hotel hotels go up or down. We're using that same type of formula to set fees for golf. Uh, so based on our weather, time of year, um, we, you can get uh, fees that range for from what may be above our rack rates to as low as 50% off, depending on what's going on and how busy the golf courses have been. And again, we haven't, uh, over the last year, we haven't done a lot of dynamic pricing because we've been so busy that uh, we're really offering or um, only accepting our, our rack rates and everybody seems to be willing to uh, pay for that, uh, those rates. Uh, if you could skip two slides, Erica. So the operations uh, of the golf course. So this is uh, what it costs and what we expect to bring in in revenue for 2021. Uh, revenue of uh, just a little over 2.8 million. And we're looking at expenditures of right at 2.8 million. Um, each year we tend to bring in a little bit more revenue than we anticipate and usually uh, spend a little bit more or a little bit less than we intended. Um, we have a goal of trying to bring in between $250,000 and $300,000 over our expenses every year in an effort to try to start setting money aside for large capital projects. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, a couple of slides from now, but I did want to talk a little bit about the budget process. So the budget uh, process, it seems like anymore is a year round activity. Um, we will start uh, making our um, budget requests for 2022 sometime in late April and early May. And uh, those uh, have to be submitted. Um, the city manager and the budget staff then review those requests. And then they invite us to what they call as budget meetings. And we are asked as staff to present uh, our need of why we're asking for uh, either pieces of equipment, additional staff, that sort of thing. From there, the city manager and the budget staff pull together a budget that's presented to city council uh, in August. City council then conducts uh, meetings with staff where staff come in and do somewhat of the same thing, present uh, why we're asking for the things we're asking for. Uh, council asks many questions during those processes. And then during October, they hold two different public hearings where the public can go in and uh, talk to the council about what's being proposed in the budget, the pros, cons, disadvantages and advantages of that. And then the council 
generally approves the overall budget sometime in late November. So if any of the board ever has any questions about what we're requesting or why we're doing things like we're doing, uh, we're happy to talk about that as, as staff and try to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, next slide, please. Just a reminder that we have a little over $5.7 million in, uh, in bond uh, projects that we are currently working on. Uh, the Butte Creek uh, maintenance facility being the number one priority. And I think I had mentioned at last month's meeting that sometime later this spring, we'll start the process of hiring a design firm to design the irrigation projects at Twin Peaks and Sunset. Uh, next slide. So this is our capital projects. We have three primary projects that generally have some type of funding each year. Uh, the golf uh, course paths, uh, golf buildings rehab and golf irrigation rehab projects. Uh, we requested $70,000 for new projects and we're carrying over $680,000 right now in uh, uh, monies from past years. And, and one of the reasons that those dollars are, are so high is that in 2020, all of the projects were frozen uh, because we didn't know what was gonna happen with, with the budget. And that was across the city that all capital projects uh, uh, had to be placed on hold. Towards uh, uh, September, those uh, projects, uh, we were allowed to start spending on those. We did at the end of the year do some of the rehab of the ponds out at U Creek and are continuing to work on projects for 2021 and Dan and Ryan will share um, those uh, here in a few minutes. Uh, 2022 capital project requests will start uh, late March, uh, early April and those uh, project proposals are due to the budget office uh, by the end of April. And we will be presenting what we have in mind for 22, not in March, we don't have a meeting in March, but we will present those ideas at our April meeting. So uh, next slide. That's kind of a quick summary. Does anyone have, <clears throat> excuse me, have any questions about budget or structure or how things are organized in golf? Marsha? Yeah. Um, my aunt, yeah. Yep. So you had quite a bit of extra revenue last year due to the uptick in golf. Is yep. that part of that carryover number? No, that, that's a separate number. We have okay. uh, just a little over $2 million in, in carryover from 20 to 21. Again, we're looking at somewhere around the number of $5 million to replace the irrigation projects at... Okay. Uh, the irrigation at U Creek, which we will not be able to go to a bond election uh, anytime in the future because we got debt for 20 years. So we need to start planning for that. And then any uh, other uh, projects that we want to do to make uh, improvements on the golf course. And that okay. runs from irrigation to replacing roofs on the clubhouses. Got it. Anyone hey, Jeff. else? Jeff, yeah. it's Justin, Justin Drake. Being new to the board, um, I don't know if this has ever been done in the past, but have we ever looked at basically forms of labor, like internships, things like that with, with surrounding colleges where we could potentially pull in, um, help with marketing, help with other things that could potentially drive some more revenue from there too? Has that been done in the past? or It has not been done in golf that I'm aware of, but it's certainly something we could entertain. We've done that in recreation for many years and uh, we can uh, put some feelers out to the surrounding colleges to see if anybody's interested in that. Erica, who is leading our meeting tonight is the marketing person for recreation, golf and senior services. And I'm sure Erica would be happy to work with a marketing person to take some of the pressure off of her because she's also doing things for the 
things for the city manager's office now as well. I'm always happy to entertain good partnerships. <laughs> <laughs> so great idea though, Justin, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Jeff, uh, John speaking, I have a silly, silly question. Why did we get charged the one cent? When we when we uh, for our for our rounds of golf, the one cent. Yeah, at the we've always you know like it's supposed to be seven. I'm just picks up seven dollars is the charge, and we get charged seven dollars and one cent. And I just wonder why that's there. The one cent, at least for me, what I noticed at sunset, um, when it's when we're charging the the uh, the golf cart tax. So the green sure. fees are. I believe, correct, Jeff? That's correct. So the green, the cart fees, they're a taxed number. So when we put that into the system, 9.22 plus the tax rate for the city comes out, in, at least in my computer every single time, as 10.01. And I've tried adjusting it. Um, it's, I've gone to 9.21, takes it down to $9.99. So <laughs> I've been left it at the what it's supposed to be 9.22 or yeah nine dollars and 22 cents to, to get to that ten dollar mark i don't know if anyone else has that problem but um i've it's been like that at sunset for at least a year and a half now <laughs> ethan sam do you have that same issue we 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 do at Ute creek as well um it happens to us whenever we ring in two players at one time because cart fee is 15 dollars, and you can back the tax out of that because what we do um John is we we back the tax out so that the card fee comes up to an even dollar amount for the customer. So you're not paying like for instance, fifteen dollars a person here for eighteen holes. Or you're not paying fifteen plus tax. We basically are eating the tax for you. <clears throat> but to get that number to come out exactly right, um, it only works for one player. You do it for two, then it then the tax rolls up by a penny. Same at Twin Peaks. It's just the rounding of the tax in the software. I'm just curious. <laughs> Good Are question. you paying that extra penny? <laughs> <laughs> I collect it every time from him. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't want our, we don't want our books to be off. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, great. Thank you, Drew. Yep. Uh, next item is the capital improvement program. Yep. And Ryan and Dan will lead this. Erica, if you could put the next uh, PowerPoint up. Oh, well, um, I think I only have one in the Teams folder. Hold on just a sec. Oh, uh, well, actually, is that the, is Erica, that the, you should have, you, it's named projects, 2021 projects. Oh, okay. PDF. I think it's the PDF. Got it. Hold on just a sec. And I will, does it look like this? It's, there we go. Okay. Yep. Yep. Got that's it. it. Perfect. So just before Dan, before you start. What we wanted to do is kind of give a representation of the projects we're looking at doing for 2021. <clears throat> During the months when the pros and Ryan or Dan do their full presentation of each of the golf courses, they'll give you a little bit more detail, but we just want to do a quick summary of what we're looking at for this year. All right, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, so this is the, like it says there, the west side stairs go at U Creek. Um, these are the original stairs that were built back in, I guess, 96 or 97, whenever the clubhouse was put together. And um, as probably many of you have been out there, the, this middle picture, all the boards are just warped kind of in the middle and they're getting, they're just getting wore out. This landing picture we're here with the yellow um, step there, the boards are actually starting to rot out in the back corner. So that's turning into a safety hazard. So we're gonna address that this year with um, a metal type staircase here um, with a, it has a pan in it and then concrete. So the stairs should last a long time. <laughs> we, we should get to 25 to 35 years out of them. So 
that'll be good. We won't have to deal with those in the future. So, um, okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> there you go, perfect. Um, so this area here, this is number 11 on the left. That's number 11 green there. And I'm talking where that red circle is, that's the crossover going there. And as if you guys play out there, you know that car path is really starting to show there. There's getting to be a two, three inch, maybe almost four inch gap there, and it's causing a major bump. So what we're gonna do this probably late spring, early summer when we get a, enough help there, we're gonna cut all that out with the sod cutter, get it down to a, a good grade, surface grade, and then come in with topsoil, fill it off um, so it's level with the cart path and then just blend it back into that whole dirt area. And then we'll come and resod it. And then there, a new product that we found, um, I found it at the GCSA show that they did virtually this year. It's called track mats. And what it is, it's, a, it's kind of like a plastic honeycomb uh, material that will absorb the cart traffic and will not wear out as fast. They say it won't, they say you can get, should be able to get five years to seven years out of it. Um, the last material that we had in there, we were lucky to get two years out of it. So I'm hoping this will, will last and we'll be able to use it in other spots around the course if it, if it helps. So um, then the next one on the right there is the cart. Oh, go. Yep. There. Perfect. <laughs> is the uh, cart path coming from 10 T to uh, 10 green. And then the little um, Y there that we're going to do about 15 feet going towards 11 there, but that's going to be a new cart path done in crusher finds, kind of like, um, I think it's number seven at sunset. They have theirs done in red, but we're gonna do ours in gray just to kind of match the, the concrete that's out there. So hopefully that'll be get going here at the end of March, whenever the ground, th ground thaws out, we have that scheduled. So should look good. And then we'll resod <clears throat> all the edges. So the cart path will be about a good eight foot width and, and be able to fix up those edges that have gotten worn out over the years. Next slide, please. And then um, this isn't necessarily a CIP project, but we're going to try to add a lot of, not a lot of, some irrigation out on the course, um, starting with number 17 along the car path there. Our irrigation heads are not on the edge. So when it gets hot in July, um, we don't have backup coverage there. So that's why you see some of those edges getting really thin and really burnt out. So we're going to add some irrigation along those whole edges and hopefully the lake banks on on 11 and 13 too. And we are also hoping to get a new ball dispenser at U Creek here very soon. <laughs> That's it for U Creek, I think. So at Twin Peaks, we're uh, like uh, Jeff mentioned, we're gonna be doing a lot of the projects that we weren't able to do in 2020 due to the pandemic. And the major project at Twin Peaks was redoing the cart path along uh, number five tee box that used to be um, in a lot better shape. And over the years, it's gotten worn out, worn down. So with this new plan, we're going to be going from the um, restroom we have on the course and building a cart path that goes between uh, four green and 13 green and connecting the existing cart path on number five, along with, um, I guess, uh, rejuvenating or rebuilding that cart path in the um, footprint that it currently is. We're gonna be using uh, gold crusher finds with a stay lock material, a lot like what Sunset has in red and uh, Dan mentioned will be put down at U Creek and that material will help compact those crusher finds so they'll deal and hold up with the cart traffic and then the irrigation water. And also during that uh, process, we'll be laying sod around the edges, to help keep the new path um, contained in a decent footprint and then redoing the um, sod and some irrigation on the south bank on number 5T that's always been kind of poor due to irrigation coverage. Uh, next si slide, please. Then another one of these projects we're doing was redoing a remodel of the 
portion, the men's portion of the restroom on the golf course. For this, we're gonna be replacing the plastic FRP board that's on the one uh, wall that the sinks are mounted to. This over the years, it's gotten discolored and cracked and full of holes due to numerous um, items, items being drilled in it, along with the uh, partitions will be re removed and repainted a new color to uh, freshen them up a little bit, along with replacing the cracked and missing baseboard along the walls and floor that are now tile. We'll be putting down a rubber material that will last a lot longer and be uh, work a lot better with the shifts in temperature and water that ends up in the bathrooms. Then uh, the, another part of that would be reinforcing these the stainless steel sinks we have that now if anyone's ever golfed at Twin Peaks knows that those sinks are a little loose hanging on the walls for people sitting on them, leaning on them, and this being there for numerous years. And part of that will be uh, um, putting those a little tighter up against the wall so they no longer rattle when people try to use them. So then, uh, next slide, please. So now, so yeah, now at sunset, uh, one of the main projects there will be leveling number 5T, a lot like what was done at Twin Peaks in previous years to remove some of the crown that has occurred over the years due to top dressing, seeding, being uh, divots taken out and general maintenance practices. So the front T will have the crown just removed and flattened out and then resodded. But the, um, the yellow, the white and blue tee will be stripped down and then it will be flattened into one, one big level. So it'd be one big tee that will share the white and the blue tee boxes instead of two separate tee boxes as they are now. So once that done, the sod will be removed the grade will be reshaped going back into the flat part of the golf courses. And then also this turnaround, the, the wear spot that's seen around the tree and in front of the bunker from four green, a uh, cart path out of red crusher finds with the staylock material will be installed there to help uh, alleviate this wear pattern that we usually get from this high traffic area. And then uh, next slide, please. And then along the same project, we're doing the same thing on the back tee of number nine where the sod will be removed to remove the crown that's in the back, uh, mainly the blue tee area of this tee box and then will be resodded after it's flattened out with no regrading needing to be done on the sides of that tee box. And then a red crusher fine with Staloc material cart path will be done on the cart path seen here on uh, number nine that will go from about where the asphalt ends around the T complex down to somewhere around where the asphalt starts going up the hills, up the hill towards the clubhouse on number nine. Yeah. And then that one will have um, sod placed around the sides of the cart path to give it a to keep it in place and then we'll redo the landscaping around that sod on the cart path to keep it in place. And uh, next slide, please. And then uh, current project that we're uh, working on and um, Ryan ha has a big hand in is we are moving the starters counter at Sunset Pro Shop. On the left is the current old counter that is there and now we're moving it more towards the uh, partition wall that's by Ryan's office. And going up to this, we'll have the two computers, all the, and everything else that he needs at the starter's desk at a more convenient area in the clubhouse for him. And then this will also allow us to increase uh, better flow in the, sun, in the Sunset Pro Shop to have a definite area that's pro shop 
and towards where the old counter was to be a restaurant area with more seating and different sitting spots for the restaurant portion of the clubhouse. Where right now it is kind of mix and mashed around where it's one area for the two different uses. And this will help improve the flow of the golf course and get a definite better feel for pro shop side and restaurant side. And I believe that's it. There may be one more slide. Oh. And then um, one other thing I forgot to mention on here that we'll be trying to do this year too is we're gonna try to plant some uh, trees at both Sunset and Twin Peaks either uh, purchasing them, them ourselves and installing them or through the force help of the forestry department. Since both courses over the past couple of years have had a lot of trees removed just from the trees being old and being deemed unsafe. We just need to uh, replace some trees before we start getting big wide open spots in the golf courses to help, to help keep the characteristic of each golf course. I'm a great tree proponent. I think that's a wonderful idea. Just can you keep them out of the fairway because they don't do me any good. Fairway. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to sweet talk uh, Ryan and Keith because they'll be uh, part of this planning of where the trees will go also to help improve the characteristics of the golf courses. Good job. Thank you. Anybody have any questions Three. about projects? Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. All right, Jeff, we're on to uh, 7B, uh, Advisory Board Bylaws. Yeah, it's been a while since the board had reviewed bylaws, so um, we had uh, sent those out uh, a week or so ago. Based on your bylaws, you have to have them at least five days in advance. Um, I I have, I'm not planning on going through every part of the bylaws. I can answer any questions. We do have two changes. The first one is in section three. We now are meeting at six o'clock PM. So we will need to make that change. And then the next one is in section 12. And it refers to um, the uh, golf operations manager um, that should uh, now read the uh, recreation and golf manager. We don't have an operations manager when recreation and golf was combined that fell under my role. Um, it does uh, talk about uh, how we handle vacancies. It talks about um, absenteeism and uh, again about how we amend the bylaws and uh, I can answer any questions that anyone might have. That doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, we can, we can uh, vote on what we have now with the provision that accepting the two changes. Is that correct, Jeff? Yes, that's correct. I'll move they be Alrighty. approved as the changes as noted. Second. All righty. All in favor, aye. 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 All against? Well, the ayes have it. Got it. Any other items from the staff? Uh, item number eight. I don't have anything else. I don't know if any. Yeah, I, I have one one item. Uh, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of new here, but I I wanted to say that I think that uh, we should feel very lucky to have the uh, quality of the head golf professionals that we have in our courses. Uh, last year, I was ready to quit because my golf game was so awful, really. I decided to go to Keith, and as a result of his instructions, I added over 50 yards to my tee shot and dramatically improved my chipping. On a good day, you know, at Twin Peaks, at high 80s, low 90s. But more importantly, Keith, uh, you brought back a fun to my golf game. And for that, I'm very, very appreciative. So thank you, thank you very much. 
Very kind of you to say that. Thank you, John. It's my pleasure. And you're just, you're, you're fun to work with. We have a good time doing it too. So it works out well. Plus well, we can John, talk about the Red Sox. This is, yeah, this, right. is Mar- this is Marshall, John. If I were to come to you, would you charge less than Keith? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he always gives me a good deal. <laughs> Appreciate that, John. I appreciate Thank you. Good words, John. Yep. Thank you, Keith. Keith, Ryan, Sam, they all, they all do a great job for us. Absolutely. Uh, definitely, definitely agree. Uh, any other items from the board? I'm right. hearing that. I'm going to um, adjourn. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Second. Very good, folks. Thank you so much for your time here this evening. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for what you do. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thank you. Thank you Erica. Appreciate thank it, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.